This secret dramatically changed how I view cybersecurity. The crazy thing is that it's not even really a secret. It just is not talked about nearly as much as it should be. And since learning it and becoming more aware of it, I've had a huge transformation in how I view cybersecurity and my role in the industry. In this field, you will encounter a lot of what different folks have to say about cybersecurity. And you will encounter a lot of absolutist statements, as is the case with anything, but it's definitely a case in cybersecurity. This meaning that it is either all or it's nothing. You are either going to be 100% secure or you are basically just bait for hackers. You will either implement the most secure products that they personally recommend or your security is trash. And at face value, it might seem like they are giving good advice, especially if you're coming from an area where you're not as aware of cybersecurity and the different best practices. But in reality, they're either negating all the good that cybersecurity has by basically overwhelming you and making you think that you have to do a ton of work. And at that point, I may as well just let them hack me. And really, that's not a good thing. Frankly, cybersecurity doesn't have to be that complicated, and it's not that complicated. Let's take some examples. Statements like, you have to use a YubiKey, or you have to use this specific password manager, or even something like, you have to use Linux as your main operating system. Let's be real. If you're a security person, or if you're particularly concerned, or your risk is high of being attacked, then yeah, those can be great security products that you can use. Not that Linux is any less susceptible to hacking than any other operating system, but I digress. Heck, if you enjoy these things, there's no harm in it. It's great to learn new products and tools and be familiar with them and use them. This isn't to shame perfectly valid and good cybersecurity products. This is more to say that absolutist statements like that are actually counterproductive for cybersecurity as a whole. And it completely forgets one of the cornerstones of cybersecurity, risk. Risk is at the center of it all. And it's not something that you're ever gonna get down to zero. And this might come as a bit of a hot take, but you shouldn't even want to get risk down to a zero yet. Obviously, you know, in a perfect world, we would live with zero risk. But to do that, you would not be living any life. And we still want people to live their lives, right? You still want a business to be able to conduct business. You still want to go out and enjoy the internet and the different things that this world has to offer. And those things incur a specific amount of risk. And this is where things can be a little spicy is because cybersecurity should not be the center of the business. And it never will be. Business is at the center of business. Cybersecurity is supposed to be something that wraps around the entire business business and helps it actually function the way it's supposed to without any interference from outside actors. Our job is to facilitate business, not get in the way of it. And believe me, the moment as a cybersecurity professional that you start getting in the way of business being done, yeah, people will take notice and leadership will take notice. And that's a really bad thing because we are violating our mandate. And this is really where the secret comes in is we're really just a bunch of risk managers. Our focus is targeted on the protection of information and assets and more specifically within cyber cybersecurity, it's the protection of information and assets as they exist in cyberspace. We aren't ethical hackers just for the sake of ethically hacking. And we're not setting up security policies just because they're fun. I mean, maybe we have fun doing these things and that's a bonus, but in a perfect world, our industry would not exist. Because in a perfect world, people would not be doing bad things that would require a whole industry around preventing bad things from happening. Well, some of us enjoy these things because we're nerds. But really, we're just doing these things so that business can continue. We don't want hackers to steal people's information or money. And we can do this by reducing the risk that a business or a person has from hackers. And this is where a lot of people getting into the industry, including myself whenever I was getting started, get really confused. It's easy to take our mandate of security too far. And that can have a very real negative impact on business. And will ultimately have a very negative impact on cybersecurity and the culture of cybersecurity that we're trying to develop internally. We are not dictators of security. And we are not out to turn our organization into four knocks, even though it is incredibly easy to do so, or at least want to do so. After all, we are wanting to improve our security and we're always gonna find little ways that we can do so. Now, again, this is not a call for complacency. You, if you check out my channel, there's enough evidence to see that we actually still have a long ways to go. And I've already spoken on how I think hackers are winning. This is more a call to not give up the lead whenever we finally end up in a situation where we've reduced the risk in an organization to a really a good level and we've implemented some pretty decent security. We need to cement our gains and not focus on little things that will end up being counterproductive for the efficiency of business and ultimately counterproductive for security. And we do that by making decisions that make our chief financial officer pull their hair out because we recommend them getting a security product or getting into some security relationships that frankly cost too much. You can do quite a lot with just a little and you can do that once you have a great understanding of risk and you have a great understanding of the organization that you are a part of.
Remember that this is a partnership between you and the business that you're working with. Both of you want the same thing, good security, but they want good security without turning security into a financial black hole. And really you should want the same thing. However, it is incredibly easy for security to become a financial black hole. And that's where you have to be tread very lightly and really focus on the most important things and not end up sinking tons of money into things that really are not gonna have a substantial impact on security as a whole. And again, this is all much, much, much easier to do once you have a good grasp on what I've said earlier, risk. When you know what your level of risk is at any given point in time, whenever you know what your business or your organization is doing at any given point in time and what those activities risk profiles look like, then you'll really have a good idea on what you can do to mitigate that risk. You can achieve so much with little just by understanding risk. Now going back to personal security and the statements I made earlier about YubiKeys and password managers. Again, there's nothing wrong with getting a YubiKey or using a specific password manager. However, personally, and this is just my opinion, I would be perfectly happy if you just use a password manager. I don't care which one you use, just use a password manager. And I mean use it. Don't get one and just sit on it and no, not actually use it. Like get one and use it. The debate on which password manager is best is really kind of silly. And ultimately if someone's like actually legitimately in the market for getting a password manager and they end up getting one that is really a lot of work to set up and maybe they don't know how to do it right, that can actually be counterproductive. Get one that works for you. Your personal risk is much, much higher whenever you're not using a password manager versus whenever you're using one. Now, with, whenever it comes to something like a YubiKey, how much impact to your risk profile does it have if you're using one versus whenever you're not using one? For some of you, it might actually be a substantial difference between the, a high risk of being attacked by somebody specific versus not being attacked because you have that additional layer of security. And that's perfectly good and you should probably use that. But for a lot of people, it's not gonna have a dramatic impact on your overall risk pro profile. So getting on to folks to get one and it really impacting the flow of their day and burning them out on the topic of security as a whole, that's counterproductive. We can really improve the general level of cybersecurity for everybody, and I mean everybody, if we focus on the things that really matter, which is using a password manager in general and not having petty debates on which specific password manager works the most, or whether they should use additional security products or you know what operating system they're using. As long as they are using a password manager, they're keeping their updates coming in, they're not staying out of date and they're not like spewing personal information all over social media or the internet. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. This is a still all a very big, broad, challenging and complex topic and discussion. I want this to be a discussion. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'm sure I was probably off base with some of this and I want to hear your thoughts. Am I off base? Am I on the money? Let me know below. Speaking of money and this issue, cyber attacks are supposed to cost globally $10.5 trillion in damages annually by 2025. Check out this video to see why I think we're losing this cybersecurity battle. All right, I'll see you all next time. Bye.